Hi, my name is Matthias van Onsem and in this presentation we will be taking a look at KVM virtualization with the web UI on Debian. In this video I'll be showing you how to set up a KVM host on Debian, how to install a web user interface for that KVM host, and how to manage your KVM host from the web user interface. So before we get into technical details, we might first look at what KVM has to offer us. Of course, in a consumer-grade system, we have our hardware, on which we, we run our operating system. This is fine in most cases, of course, but this isn't a great setup for when we have like a lot of services running at once. And that is where KVM comes in. On KVM we have of course our same hardware on which we run an OS, which is in this case uh, Debian. But thanks to the KVM package, we can make that operating system a hypervisor as well. So that we can run multiple operating systems on top of that. Now keep in mind that KVM is a command line tool, which, is, which isn't really user friendly to the, to the most users of course. There are a lot of UI tools out there that support KVM, but we'll be taking a look at um, Web Virtualization Manager. This is a man free management tool, which can be accessed through a normal web browser to manage our KVM system, like the virtual machines and their resources. This means multiple clients can connect simultaneously to the KVM host without even having the need of, for a SSH or Telnet client. So in conclusion, KVM uh, offers us a hosted virtualization platform on which we can run virtual machines. Thanks to the Web Virtualization Manager, we, can, we are able to manage our KVM with a user-friendly uh, UI. Uh, this mean we can, means we can manage our resources such as storage, RAM and CPU power our virtual network uh, that our virtual machines will be using. Of course we can manage our virtual machines uh, as well, including their resources, uh, their uh, backups or snapshots, and we can even connect to the virtual machines using the browser. We can also monitor things like CPU loads and RAM or memory. We hope this, uh, I hope this has helped you understand the benefits of using KVM and the Web Virtualization Manager. So let's now take a look at, uh, at how we can set this up on our own Debian system. So here we are on our fresh Debian system. Uh, of course, I will be using a terminal to install and configure our KVM and web portal packages. Uh, but before we begin on installing the KVM package, we should check if our CPU supports uh, virtualization. Uh, we can simply check this by the command lscpu uh, to, uh, for uh, listing our CPU specs. And as you can see, my CPU supports, uh, fully supports virtualization. If uh, it could be that your um, output will be something like VTX, VTD or VTC uh, depending on your hardware support. If it supports virtualization but it isn't mentioned in the list, chances are that you will have to enable it in the BIOS for it to activate. Now because uh, the CPU fully uh, supports virtualization, uh, this means we can continue on the installation of KVM. Uh, to do this we will require two packages, so we do apt get install. The first one is of course uh, KVM itself, which is uh, the hypervisor. And the second one is uh, the API we will uh, use to interact with uh, the hypervisor, which is the Lippert pin package. So it will ask us, uh, do we want to install it? Yes, we want to install it. Now if we want to configure our KVM host from our terminal, we will have to add our users uh, to the KVM and Lipherd group. 
Uh, this can be done uh, by typing add user. Uh, let's say our tux user will uh, have to be in the KVM group as well in the Lickford group. Now, if we want the lists of our VMs running on our KVM system, uh, we can view this uh, with push list all and two dashes uh, before all. And as you can see, we don't have any virtual machines running right now. Uh, we will come back to this uh, when we have configured a virtual machine uh, from uh, from our web portal. Now that our KVM system is up and running, we, bring, we can begin on installing the web portal. Now before we do so, uh, we will require a few packages. So we do apt get install. The first one will be the get package because our web portal is coming from a git repository. Python.pip is an installer for uh, Python. Uh, and we will require it to install our uh, uh, our Python uh, web portal. Also, uh, it will require a package to speak to the libvirt package, so we can uh, configure our KVM host. It also uses an XML package. as well as no VNC, which is used uh, for console connections uh, between the web portal and a virtual machine. Uh, we also can install the supervisor package, which we can use for uh, logging and uh, auto-starting the service. And Nginx will be used for hosting the web portal. Now this installation can be uh, uh, can take a long time, so I get back to you when the installation is complete. Now that we've installed all the packages, we can get our portal from the get repository uh, using the get package. So we do get clone and our source, which is get github.com red spam web vert ngr dot get now after we downloaded the repository we can take a look inside so we do cd web Now we can see a requirement.txt file, which is basically the installation requirements. So when we take our uh, Python installer, which is pip install minus r requirements, it's going to uh, install all the required packages for uh, the portal and set up the portal itself. Now after the installation, uh, we can set up the required databases. This is used uh, for this. We can use the manage.python sync db. This will also ask us uh, to create a, a super user, which is a, a user that is allowed to uh, make changes in the portal. So they ask, "Do you want to create one?" We say yes. And we will create a user tux with email address tux out tux dot tux and a password. And now this user has access to the web portal. Um, if you want another user to gain access, you can use manage dot python create super user. And let's say uh, a system a sysadmin named Cedric needs access as you know the Cedric at text. 
with passwords and now this user has uh, access as well uh, now we can also write some uh, static data into some files using the manage the python collect static this will ask us to overwrite existing files, we say yes and now our uh, web portal is fully configured now all we have to do is um, uh, run the server which we do with manage.python run server and specify a port, let's say 8008 so now the server is running on 8008 so when we go to our web browser we can say localhost 8008 of course every computer uh, on the network has access uh, on port 8008 if your firewall uh, allows it so you can log in using the tux user you can add a connection now because this is a, a management portal we aren't uh, bounded uh, to the local KVM host so we can um, uh, create any connections from TCP, SSH, TLS and of course our local machine which we, we are going to do now so uh, we create a connection to our local machine let's call it KVM local and right here we have the portal for uh, for that connection or our local KVM host so here we can uh, uh, manage our resources such as storage where we can create a storage pool uh, now storage pools can be ISO files, LVM uh, and so on but now we will, have, we will create a pool from our local drive um, this pool uh, will be available for uh, to create uh, VM disk images on and the disk images will be stored in the var lib libvirt images so let's call it the local pool and here we can see that 120.9 gig have been assigned to the pool from which uh, uh, 4.1 gig has already been used now of course uh, we will have to uh, create an image for an uh, a virtual machine on it so when we add an image give it a name say vm test storage sign it 10 gigs now this image has been created as vm test storage.emg in the var lib libvirt images you can see this of course in our local machine so when we open up another terminal and go to uh, the for lib libvirt images let's do that again as root you can see our image which is uh, the virtual machine disk of course we can uh, also configure a virtual network right now we only have one um, uh, virtual uh, adapter uh, or a router which is uh, not enabled so when we turn this switch on we can use it for our virtual machines so when we go back to uh, our virtual machines we can create one from a template or a custom one we are going to create a custom one here let's say test vm assign some ram assign it the image and the default uh, router and you see we have created a new virtual machine 
we can see this with our vers command on our local machine. So when we do vers list all with two dashes, we can see we have now have a, a virtual machine which is shut off when we start it up. You can see is that it is running. Now of course because this is a web portal you can do this from uh, anywhere. And lastly we have uh, uh, we have our uh, monitoring tools which uh, gives us a, a real-time graph uh, from our CPU usage as well as our memory usage. Note that we are running this uh, on port 8008 now. If you want to configure it to port 80, uh, you will have to configure it in the Nginx using a reverse proxy. Now, although this won't be shown in the video, uh, I will put a link um, to the documentation to do so. I hope this video has helped you with setting up a KVM and Web Virtualization Manager. Thanks for watching.